Allow me to introduce you to the world of progressive metal. Into the unknown. So how do you take a Disney princess song and turn it into a progressive technical metal song? That's what I'm gonna to try to show you today. If you haven't seen it already, I did a cover recently for the song Into the Unknown from Frozen 2, so you can check that out. And this was the first project I have. What I've got right here is my draft for kind of writing. This is what I used to learn how to play the song and kind of figure out how to translate it into a progressive metal song. I thought it was a cool enough idea that was worth exploring, and I thought it might be kind of a good opportunity for me as a musician just to be able to show showcase kind of my style with, you know, a song that's fairly well known. I mean, it's fairly well known. I think it's got like over 200 million views, so I think a few people know it. I don't know if any of them like metal, but <laughs> they know the song. So let's have a look at the project here. So the first thing I did was I got the actual track and I started this back in early 2020, so like shortly after the movie had come out. I know I was really late to releasing my version of it, but there were really only two versions of the song. There was the movie version, which I have right here, and there was the Panic at the Disco cover. And I listened to that a little bit, but I really wanted my main inspiration to come from the actual track. I only referred to the other version just for a few sections, just to kind of get an idea how they handled certain areas of the song. So I brought it in here and I got the tempo set. It's at about 105 BPM. And pretty much the first thing I did, I just grabbed my guitar and I was trying to find the melody and the chords. So like I would just listen to the song So it's kind of hanging on that, that chord there, and it's going to switch. So I just went through the song like that and just did simple power chords just to kind of learn the chord progression and to learn the arrangement of the song. And then at the same time I was using the software piano to dial in the notes here. So what I needed to do was then take this and translate it into a key that I could sing and that was appropriate for the tuning of my guitar. So I tend to play in drop C tuning. So I had to figure out kind of how that was going to work. I think I jumped ahead to the chorus. Let's go to that high note. Usually what I do if I'm trying to get a song into my key, I know my, my range. This uh, A right here. It's not the highest note that I can hit, but if the melody's hanging out around there, it's probably going to be too high for me. It's going to be exhausting. But if I'm just coming up there or just to a few notes higher every now and then, that's usually a good range for me. So let's see what the highest note is. All right, so a little higher than an A. <laughs> and I'm not Brendan Urie, so I couldn't sing that. So I wanted to bring this down. So I think what I did was I took that high note and I tried to move it down into my range. Here's that A. So if I went like right there. So that's the chord right there. And I think I saw that going from here to there. And I realized, oh, if I move this down two more, that kind of works for the drop C tuning. Because I can play the first chord here, then go down here, and then back. So I was like, that might work. The other thing that helped me indicate it was the intro. I can't remember exactly when I started working on that, but I knew I wanted the intro to be kind of riffy. I didn't just want to write like power chords. I wanted some kind of notey stuff in there. I can't remember exactly how I came up with it and what stage I came up with it, but I wrote this little, this little picky riff. When I wrote that and realized I could go from here down to that drop C, that just seemed like the appropriate key for my kind of tuning. Now, for a while, I was actually concerned that it might be too low. So part of me knew that the song was sort of designed to really put a spotlight on that high note. That was like the big moment of the song. And so I was thinking maybe I need to put this in a key where I can hit my highest note. But ultimately I decided to stick with this key because I felt like if I practiced, I would have more control over my voice for the whole song and instead of just competing to see how high of a note I can hit. And I mean, I can't hit as high of a note, again, I'm not up here, so whatever. Yeah, so all I did, I find that high note, and then I just bring it down to something lower. In this case, I think it's a G. Yeah, right there. I was able to just drag down the whole melody, so now it's in my key. 
but I won't. Some look for trouble. So that's kind of a nice little trick there. So then it just came to writing. I didn't just start at the beginning. I started where the ideas were, you know, and the first idea came from that course, you know, the into the unknown. Wow, that was awful. <laughs> Into the unknown. So the first time I heard that chorus, that kind of marching rhythm, I was hearing this drum beat, this bop it bop it bop it bop you know, that snare on the downbeat. That was kind of the main thing. And then I could hear like building an intensity and adding some double bass there. So here are the guitars I recorded. Um, I'm pretty sure I had super old strings on my guitar and I've only got it going through a few plugins because this is just the writing stage. This isn't the final product. But I started with that and then I wrote the drum beat. So this was my starting point. Ah. Oh. <laughs> that's where it was gonna get good. So that was like the main driver and you know, I recorded that and I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. That didn't exactly persuade me to do the whole song yet, but that definitely showed more potential. Like, yeah, there's something here. When I write, and especially when I was writing this, my main instruments are the guitar and the drums. And I would just kind of go back and forth, try to figure out how to interpret the orchestra into the guitar and how to write riffs out of that. And then whenever I kind of hit a blank, I would just go to the drums and find out the right groove. Usually in courses, I have kind of a tendency to write chords and then some kind of lead part over top. So I do have these uh, lead parts right here. So I kind of had a few different variations of that. And it was funny, looking back at this, I was like, why? didn't I use that? But again, I think it was just because it sounded kind of cool, but it felt like a lot of extra work for something that probably didn't really matter all that much. And so I decided, again, I wanted to make this as easy on myself as I could. So I kind of left that out. These current guitars are really muddy, but the final guitars were a lot brighter, a lot tighter, and you could really hear the, the high end of the chord. And so that was kind of enough to give it that air that would have come from the, uh, the lead part. Still pretty cool. I might have to try to fit it in there somehow. But yeah, it wasn't something I wanted to stress about. So I had kind of an idea for the chorus, but now I wanted to look at the verses. Let's have a listen to the original verse and then we'll sort of see how I translated that to guitar. It's just kind of chords and it's really just the strings doing like bum 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 bum. So the first thing I would have done is just translate that into my key. So that's gonna start here. Bum 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 bum. But I didn't want to do just power chords because that's boring and my style is kind of progressive metal so I was like alright how do I take this chord and build a riff out of that. Kind of in the intro they kind of hint at these notes here. So I tried to write something that kind of featured those notes in there so I came up with this. And then I tried to kind of stick with that theme going to this open note. And that little descent there, I'm actually pretty sure this was inspired from the intro because I know they kind of have that like diminished chord descent. The first version that I wrote might not have been the same as the final version. I probably wrote it one way and then as I got more familiar with the track, I was able to tweak it to kind of closer resemble what was in the original track. Now, I think once I wrote that riff, I was able to just play the other chords kind of like that. But then I kind of hit like a dead end and I wasn't really sure what to do. So that's where I'll usually go to drums. And you can kind of hear, just from playing that, to me, the drum part already writes itself. I could imagine something with toms doing bum 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 pop a pop bum 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 pop a dum bum bum dum pop a da bum dum dum pop a dum. So that's exactly what I wrote. I just kind of bum bum dum pop a da, you know, <laughs> kind of did that. And I think I had that first, and then I felt like it was a bit redundant, so to change things up, I do a variation of that beat with the uh, china in there. 
And so that was the first beat I wrote. But here's the thing about drum beats. Whenever you do a tom beat like that, usually it feels like you're building up to something. Whereas playing more of like a groove beat or a straight beat feels like you are settled in the song. So that was one variation I came up with. But then I've got this other beat variation over here. So you've got that polyrhythm with the ride there. You know, I liked both, they were really cool. And so that's kind of what'll happen is sometimes I'll come up with multiple ideas and it's not always that you have to say no to one. Sometimes you just gotta find the right place for them in the song. So I felt like the toms would work well at the beginning because the song is building up. And then once you're in the song, verse two, you go to that groove rhythm with the ride. And then we get to the pre-course. 